This is a cellular automata rule, which is a Zabotinsky reaction, and I call it yuppie worms, which are like a coral reef of tube worms stimulating each other. Now, this is a variation. I call it middle class worms, and see, they're a little looser. And as we zoom in, there's another variation called bohemian worms that are all rough and uh, kind of rustic looking. Now, uh, we can switch to all sorts of different cellular automata rules. This one is H glass, which is like the sand of an hourglass falling down and stacking up. This is Brian's brain, which is a very active foamy rule with lots of gliders. And this is a heat diffusion, which is an interlaced one. Now, this here is called eco. It's, it's uh, big blobs of land and water with Brian's brain in life. And this is another heat diffusion, which is all fluffy and fancy and smooth, which looks good with a nice gradient color map. Now, this is Brian's brain. We're zooming out from it. And now we're going down in 3D and flying around following the gliders. Now, that's a symmetrical rule. Right in the center, we have this beautiful orchestration of little guys here. And we're going to go zoom in in and follow one of these formations of gliders as it flies around the world and gets all smashed up with other ones so kind of like a world war ii documentary now this is sim city running on unix and for some strange reason it has cellular automata built in and it uses the the tiles of sim city to display the cell states and fortunately, the tiles are arranged in a nice, interesting order. There's all these traffic tiles, you can see. Um, and there's green grass and fire. Now I'm going to release a monster, because the uh, part of SimCity is still running, the part that runs around and smashes everything. And now we're looking at the overall map, and this cellular automata is boiling chaotically. And now it's smoothing out a little bit. And in there somewhere, there's a monster stomping around, crushing and... Uh, uh, just wondering why this doesn't look like a normal city. So, okay, so there's like rings of fire and traffic tiles. Um, now here's drawing in the tiles with the SimCity editing tools. This is running life, so I'm just putting a little road down and the rule evolves according to life, and it's using the different tiles of SimCity to display a history of the states. So, uh all these drawing tools, even I can draw a fire station and plop that down and instantly it just melts away. This is using a color map from a dollar bill and a symmetrical um, background. It's a study in doing sort of the interlace, the lace of money. Now this one's using some nice molten gold color maps and uh, this is another symmetrical rule that starts out symmetrical and remains that way but then this one is a version where we've broken the symmetry and it looks more like um, molten metal all gooey and blobby the way uh, it would be so uh, these symmetrical rules are pretty neat because uh, you can switch between them and it will remain symmetrical but now this is the same cellular automata code but in a different framework for real-time performance it's running live full screen and I can draw in it with various drawing tools and I can change the parameters uh, I'll change the frob to 10 which increases the heat of the system and then the drawing tool will leave a uh, sort of a trail behind now I can just interact with this and when the heat of the system gets to a certain point it'll start boiling by wrapping around from 0 to 255 and I'll increase the heat a little more. So actually that's just about to happen in these outer regions. Here we go, boom, that just wrapped around. So now we get this wonderful chaotic boiling that's gonna eat everything up. This is worms, which is a Zabotinsky reaction. And it's symmetrical, and it'll stay symmetrical even when I switch to another version of worms. This is called well, I call it yuppie worms because it's all kind of tense and uptight and square. Worms 2 is more like middle class worms, a roly poly thing. And then worms 3 I call bohemian worms because it's kind of has this nice rough kind of uh, rustic appearance. Frog 1. There we go, symmetrical. Uh, frog. 
22, this is to cool it, cool it a little faster. Frog 10 is slower. Mm, that's Frog nice. 5. I call this the Persian rug enumerator. Mm. Okay, so just say when do you want this one? Or maybe that one. We got a million. So, uh, and just tell me what colors you like. Uh, I like the purple, green, pink one. Oh, okay. Well, it's random. So, maybe you'll come along again. We mm -hmm. can say load map rows. Rose colors are good for a, mm -hmm. a rook. So, and then we'll slow it down to a frog of three and it's going to get smooth. It might go out. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. It might flatten. So it looks like we lost it, but it's easy to start again. Whoop. Frob six. Whoopsie, whoa. See, six is enough to sustain it. Now it's going to start Ooh, swelling nice. up and getting its little A. Well, it won't get as asymmetric, but it's now the boiling is staying symmetric and spreading out to the edges. And uh, Why would it lose its symmetry? Oh, well, there's sort of a flat... Oh, it, well, it won't unless I draw in it. Oh. So there's certain rules that preserve symmetry, and there's um, certain rules that don't. And you can just switch between gears that preserve symmetry, like heat. Whoa, frob. This needs a little more frob. Whoa. Oh. Frob 20. We'll put the frob on. This is like putting the gas burner starter on and then going click, 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 hmm. and then boom. It's oh, caught. Whoa, almost. Oh. Yeah, we got it. We got it. It's going out. It's it's. So there we go. So if we turn the gas down a little bit, um, it might start withering away. But then, yeah, we got it. It's still going. But if you turn it down even more, it's going to tend to flatten. Oh. Frog 9. Whoa, here we go. Just oh. a little more energy. Hmm. So um, actually, I don't have it plugged in right now, but this is great on the joystick. The drawing tool becomes, it leaves trails that, uh, um, foreground zero, yeah. So the drawing tool is going to leave these trails and they'll kind of disturb and start spiraling. And this is a very fluffy rule. Very gooey. This is a demo of The Sims House Party, and I'm running Freaky Putty on the video from the camera. So you can see the Freaky Putty version, and then you can see the original camera version. So it turns your uh, normal looking party and your software demos like this into something more like this. This is just Freaky Putty without any feedback, it just takes any sort of video and continuously and smoothly distorts it and tiles it, and the tiles are reflected so that there are no seams. So, uh, whatever nice colorful graphics you have get all twisted up, and it works great with a live camera. And, but the interesting thing to use Freaky Putty for, besides a live camera, is video feedback. Now, this is the party, the same party later on when we were projecting it on the screen, and people will get in the way of the camera, and then they see themselves projected up on the screen, kind of like a, an Alfred Hitchcock introduction here with the profile. 
Uh, unfortunately, because of the screen, it's pretty black and white, but with the chroma keyed feedback, it won't wash out and the colors will be much purer and it won't be quite so noir. But uh, people get what's going on right away and they see, oh wow, you know, I'm in there, I can move and do things and stick things in the way. And somebody brought along some balloons and they put some nice color in there. Not too much, but uh, with the chroma key blue stuff, the color will be enhanced. And I can even enhance the color in software. Um, so the people get what's going on pretty well and just have a good time with that. No instructions needed. Now this is video feedback mixed with cellular automata. The cellular automata are driving the video feedback and I have these drawing tools that I can use to paint in the live cellular automata as they're evolving. And I can change the zoom of the camera. Now using software video feedback that zoom is under software control and the distortion can be changed in many ways. So and we can fade back and forth to favor either the feedback or the cellular automata and then we can rotate the uh, the heat of the cellular automata and do that to the music like wiggling to the beat of the music or using um, you know motion tracking or gesture recognition to uh, gently change the parameters and what works really nice is sweeping out gradients and getting color maps that have smooth uh, transitions of colors so uh, this will look a little less 60s with a good color map now here's one using the uh, video mixer to key in a star shape with a, a sunset in the background and, and invert the color to get some interesting feedback now uh, you know if you get a one-to-one -one sort of a mapping in scale you start getting this intricate lace work and uh, then all the video feeds back through that and then when people go in front of the screen you get some really neat profiles and everything because uh, you know this is being projected up onto a screen and people can walk in front of it and uh, it'll be sort of equivalent to having the camera facing the blue screen and uh, but people won't be such shadows they'll be nicely picked up and uh, there'll be a lot more color coherency. So this is sort of the thing without anything. Uh, it evolves. It takes the texture that you're putting through it and uh, evolves it some interesting ways. This is a nice round blobby one. And uh, see how the uh, movement is echoed slightly offset in time the next run around the feedback. So when we shrink it, the smaller ones are shrinking a little slower. Like that. Or a little later. And there's that rotation and scale that Freaky Putty has as a parameter that the program can change. This isn't moving the camera, this is moving the transformation in software. Um, so it's much more crisp than the camera would be. So, and then here go some audience members participating in the graphics. Now here's a neat one. Shows some action. This boat going and then uh, you get some nice waves. Uh, Freaky Putty can have a nice tiled appearance, or it can have a much more distorted, twisted up appearance, but this is a nice setting with uh, more coherent, uh, less rotated and twisted setting. And of course it can smoothly and seamlessly transition between any setting. And here's with a video mixer and some people running in front and kind of a romantic scene with uh, some sunset and ocean and people. and. Now using a different shape and you can see how the texture gets repeated and kind of elaborated. Now this is some um, footage of the rave showing how we have this video screen set up and people are in front of it and dancing and there's all these colored lights everywhere. And uh, now to jump onto the camera that's actually showing the feedback this is the kind of stuff we're getting when people walk in front of it and uh, people catch on that they're part of the uh, the graphics pretty easily and start playing around and experimenting
Now here's somebody uh, twirling some neon lights. Those those come out really nicely and uh, using the camera effect to freeze and capture it. And uh, they can really take uh, any sort of uh, pattern and tile and flip it into a really nice geometric lace work using these settings. And now here's a dancer and you get the human figure repeated and suggested in all sorts of different uh, rotations. And here's some other chroma keying without very much uh, color in the feedback, but a lot of interesting black and white texture. And uh, this is some nice pure video feedback from the camera to the screen. And then putting my finger in front of it, just kind of dancing around. And it's uh, this was done for Duras here now and in space which was a live improvisational performance to music and uh, this just explores uh, what this feedback space feels like by adjusting it every once in a while a fly will fly in front of the camera which came out pretty nice so I left it in and this is exploring different rotations if you get a harmonic like a 90 degree rotation you start getting squares or um, things like that so depending on the rotation there's that fly again um, now you get a nice fingerprinty kind of a thing with everything being repeated like a lace see there's a time delay because of the feedback and everything happens one after the other and then you can see how the reflection along the edges tiles anything that's in the center out seamlessly and like a mirror because it flips left and right and up and down so there aren't any abrupt edges and you just get these nice little uh, sort of spider-like formations here or whatever uh, whatever you're putting in front of the camera just waving to say hello and uh, see how the uh, delay and the smaller ones now this is pretty neat to the music too because you can get some rhythms in the medium and see how the twisting gets delayed at different levels and here's something great doing this to the beat of music is great because it gets echoed just moving your hand in and removing it or that's my foot um, now here's a much more complex one just kind of gesturing to music very easy um, this makes really great uh, chroma key channel for mixing together other video as well and when we do this using um, blue screening of course and good lighting um, it'll be much more colorful